What up guys? Welcome back to Let's Play. We are going to start Robert's route in this video. We've oh, already yeah. done Craig and Matt. Got the good endings. So awesome. Love them. Now it's Robert because we keep hearing a lot of stuff about him and we just don't know what's going on. <laughs> what exactly to experience Robert. His last name is Small. Robert Small. It's already good. <laughs> His turn-ons are don't talk to me. You have one thing to take the desert on a gun. The ideal date is grave robbing. I thought he said he wanted to be glitter. <laughs> at least four knives. Look, at least four. I spent a lot of time thinking about you ever really look into a rabbit. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, Robert! Oh dear. Okay, Robert. He's a hoot. Let's, uh... Let's do this, I guess. He's gonna be like, what do you want? How'd you find my profile? It's such a friend zone. And you're not one. <laughs> you think no friends? Are you a ghost? <laughs> Take care of your health while you're still young. Oh. Never. <laughs> Fuck it up while you're young, then take care of it when you're old. <laughs> That's how you do it. What's the point of being young if you can't do that? I wish this loaded faster. What are you doing? <laughs> Gross. <laughs> well, and ruggedly handsome. Good thing you get at the cookout. Wanna grab a drink? I sit there for a couple seconds, hoping he'll <laughs> message me back. Uh oh. <laughs> Robert! Watch cat videos on the internet, duh! I start down a rabbit hole of cat videos and Robert quickly vanishes from my mind. I didn't realize how long I've been doing this, by the time I watched my, maybe my 30th cat video, Robert popped back into my head. I jumped back over to Dadbook to see if he's responded yet. Oh, well, I guess the guy's busy. Might as well make the best of my day. Aww, Robert. Robert. I get up, walk to the living room, and sit down and turn on the TV. That's so I make the best of my day, too. What should we watch? Food. Ooh, me hell is on. You have ten minutes to cook a five course meal that must include these ingredients. Steak, lemon meringue pie, paper clips, and a hammer. If you are unable to finish cooking, or if any of these ingredients are absent from the dish, we will release the wolves. Oh, dear. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I lose several hours to whatever the hell that was. Sigh, I get up and walk around the house. My stomach grumbles. Time for lunch. <laughs> well, I guess it's time for old Chef Lester to cook a gourmet delicacy. Ooh. I walk over to the fridge and open the door. Uh, we're gonna make a sandwich. Yeah, what the heck? Mustard jar? Goodness. I make a sandwich in its entirety while standing there. Who needs plates? The sandwich. <laughs> Lost art. <laughs> I admire my work for a second before I clumsily drop the entire thing on the floor. No! I look around and remember that Amanda's not home. This is still good. Five second rule, right? Oh yeah. Sometimes it's a ten second rule. Or a day. <laughs> what? <laughs> Read it, read it. I reassemble my sandwich, peeling pickles off the floor and putting them back where they belong in my mouth. Wait, I'm a wreck. I finish my snack and walk around the house some more, bored. When's Amanda coming home? Oh, I just remembered something. When we were packing up the whole house, we found an old basketball hoop that would hang off of a door. It would really bring the living room together. I wonder where I put that. 
spend a couple minutes poking around the new place until I find it. After installing it above one of the doors in the living room, I'm ready to dunk. Come on and slam! <laughs> I take a leap from this roof to line and rocket that sucker down the net. The crowd goes wild. And welcome to the jam! I pull out from the three-point line, breaking ankles and sinking a fadeaway. And I forget the rest of the words in this song! <laughs> Work that body, work that body, make sure you don't hurt nobody. <laughs> something, something, space jam. <laughs> Dad? Hmm. I turn around to see Amanda standing in the doorway. Her eyes a little puffy, almost as if she's been crying. Hey, Amanda, Panda, you all right? I'm what fine. are you doing? Uh, on the hoop, and I'm taking it to the hole. Huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Neither rock. Granny toss that apple. I lead the league in blocks, set the record for rebounds in my rookie year. Think you can handle this? Huh. What's a rebound? Oh, uh, where someone misses a shot and the other player tries to retrieve it. That's a. Yes! Just kidding! The <laughs> minute zigs past me, it takes a layup into the. Art of War, bitches! <gasps> Ooh, Robert's root is spicy. Amanda, language! <laughs> I don't really say that. Sin Tzu didn't care about language. That's true. I would argue that Sin Tzu cared very much about language, so once you write something as timeless as the Art of War, then you're allowed to swear. <laughs> Amanda takes her tongue out and dunks for another two points. Seriously though, are you okay? You look like you've been crying. Eh? Oh, dude, I'm cool. I did feel like this really cute dog on the way home, and it let me pet its belly. I couldn't contain my emotions. That's me though. Like, we have a lot of dogs at our apartment complex, and if they would let me pet the dogs, I definitely would. Like if I cared about these people enough to talk to them, I would just be like, can I touch your dog? <laughs> Um, which one? Tell me more about this dog. Aww! I'm gladly. She has a little French bulldog named Jacqueline, and her tongue was probably stuck out of her mouth. She had a little sweater on. Aww. Wow. I probably also would have cried if I got to pet her. <laughs> she was so excited for tummy rubs. Oh no, I'm tearing up just thinking about it again. Change the subject. I want to be soon. Oh, okay, just making sure. Ah. Maybe you should be less concerned with my face and more concerned with full court press. Amanda and I play ball for a little longer than we could get it together. We managed to not almost burn the house down this time. Afterward, Amanda and I dig into a carton of ice cream over an episode of Chopped Toddler Tournament. Yes. I would love to watch that. Yes! What you have in front of you is a uh, molecularly deconstructed sweet potato with a brown sugar demi gloss with creme fraiche of colors. This is literally a jar of baby food. The toddler really yeah, placed in tears. Hmm. Are we bad people for watching this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just then, my computer dings. <gasps> my boyfriend. <laughs> What's that? Oh, you probably just got a message. Amanda and I walk over to the computer and check dad book. It's a message from Robert! You love? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? What are you doing? What am I doing? You're just chilling. I'm just chilling! <laughs> Type just chilling. Amanda deletes the G and hits send. Uh. I'll make you look cooler. A couple moments pass by. Another message pops up. Yeah. That means he wants to hang out. I know what that means, Amanda. <laughs> but it's kinda late. Oh, he's us. Hey. Come on, Pops. Live a little. I am living with ice cream and traumatized toddlers. <laughs> well, it's your life, but I think you'd have a lot of fun tonight. You're trying to get to the neighbors better, aren't you? Ugh, fine. 
I type back a message to Robert asking for details, and he tells me to meet him at Jimmy Duh. Kim's. <laughs> well, don't wait up for me. Are you staring at the mic? I always look at the mic. I know. They're so cute. I never do. I throw on a nice jacket and run out the door. It's only a short walk to Jimmy Kim's, and it's a beautiful night. Did you say a nice jacket? Nice jacket. It's like a nice throw on the knife jacket, gotta <laughs> seduce him somehow. I walk into the bar and see the usual crowd of bar flies drinking beer and watching sports. I spot Robert at the back of the bar, and wave hi as I walk over. Hey man, how's it going? Hey buddy. Hmm. Ahoy oh there, Skipper! Robert and Mary are here, ho. Huh. I brought Mary along. Figured we needed a drinking buddy. Aw oh, man, I was excited to get to know Robert a little better. I have to deal with this weird married lady making passes at me. <sighs> Don't look so scared, kiddo. We're just having a drink. Hey. Yeah, speaking of which, I think it's time for the first round. Where are you having? Let's have whiskey straight up, yo. Oh. A dad after my own heart, huh? Oh, oh shit! We got his dick hard on the first try! First date! Is Matt just like the hardest dad? Damn! <laughs> Robert ordered three shots of whiskey and half a few vegetables. Well, this isn't what I, how I expected my night to be going. Hey! Here's the bad decisions and relaxed moral values, fellas. I'll knock back the shots. I almost choke on the whiskey as it burns. Whiskey shots are hard. Yes. Yes. They can really burn. These two, they just, they've given up. Whiskey and scotch. Whiskey makes them feel. I remember those days. Holy hell, I was a kick. I look over at Robert and Mary, who seem like old pros at this. Robert grabs his jacket and throws- Where are Goodbye. you going? <laughs> Let's get marching. Night's young, chief. Come on, we're bar hop. Oh, all right. Oh. We leave the bar and start walking down the street. I still know this area of town very well, so I just follow Robert. So where are we headed? Oh. Irish eye, we're drinking. It's an Irish pub. A good pun is the whiskey to my heart. <laughs> Puns are the lowest form of humor, Kayube. Try harder. Ouch, am I gonna be the butt of the joke all night? Mm. Jesus, Mary. Put your fangs away for a second. Aww. Thanks, Robert. Nice. We walk into Irish I were drinking. The bar is pretty much the same as Jim and Kim's, except for the old-timey Irish memorabilia on the wall. Next round. What are you having? He hasn't failed me yet, dude. <laughs> Let's do it! Ow. Okay. Robert orders three more glasses of whiskey, and we post up in a garish green booth. Mary slides in and saddles up by Robert, which makes me breathe a sigh of relief. Hmm. Let's sit this one, why don't we? Hmm. Suit yourself! Mary immediately downs her shot in one gul gulp and burps loudly. Hmm. That'll put hair on your chest. You are truly the paragon of grace and beauty. Ah. Mary grabs my drink and sips on it. Ah. Hey. Ah. Kayube, be a dear and get us another round, will ya? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know how to process this evening at all. I get up and order another round of drinks from the bartender. As I head back, I see Mary and Robert having a lively conversation. Robert roars with laughter. I don't think I've ever seen the guy smile, let alone laugh. I take a seat across the booth from them and pass out the drinks. So Edith Kit snuck some pot brownies onto the table at the last big sale, right? And I spot the little hemp sweatshirt gremlin in the act. So I go up to Edith with the baggie and I'm about to tell her when all of a sudden she just freaks out on me. You're ruining the bake sale, she says. I should have been the PTA president. Your roots are bad and blah blah blah. Mm. So what'd you do? I told her she had a brownie and everything was gonna be fine. Ha ha ha! She ate three. <laughs> that was actually pretty funny. Hey. She called the cops and told them that time had stopped. Oh. Uh. Mary looks directly at me. 
Do you smoke weed? What? Mm. You know, the devil's lettuce. Oh, <laughs> what? Okay. I, uh? I have two big fat blunts in my purse right now. Want a blaze? Uh. I don't know. You at the fence. I worked hard for what I have. And no two bit corner boy is gonna drop the dime on me. So you take what you're pushing somewhere else and I'll keep running my business the way I want it to run. What? Remember, you come at the king, you best not miss. Jesus, kid, tell it back. <laughs> Robert is so easy. He fucking loves us! Ah. I'm just kidding, cowboy. Mm hmm. Lay off the kid, Mary. You might not be used to your brand of humor. Hmm. Fine, fine. Hey. We sit around and sip our drinks, people watching and cracking jokes. After a little bit of time, I begin to warm up to Mary. Her jokes become much funnier and much less scary. It's because you're drunk. <laughs> Let me tell you. But it seems like she's not going anywhere anytime soon. Aww. I just wanted some alone time with Robert. I wonder if I can get her to leave somehow. I'm fucking your husband. Uh, lots of eligible bachelors around here. You know, I was hoping for a quiet evening with my friends. No drama, no unwarranted advances, just friendship. But no, you gotta call me out like that. Mary, I... No, no, it's fine. Damn it! You trying to ditch me, pal? Uh, no. Because if you're trying to ditch me, you can just tell me to scram. I just... No, no, it's fine. Kayubi wants a long time with his new best friend, Robert. Read you loud and clear. The wingman breaks formation to pursue their prey. Ah. Now, if you fellas will excuse me, Mary needs to sink her teeth into a helpless boy. Go with God. Nice seeing you. Ugh. Deuces, nerds. Mary gets up and saunders over to a younger looking guy at the bar. She grows on you. Does she though? I feel like she kind of delights in making men suffer. Oh. Well, she does. What about her and Joseph? Mm. What about him? You know, they're married, and she definitely tried to get in my pants the other night, and. I gesture to her across the bar where she's making goo goo eyes at the younger guy from before. He looks like he's being held hostage. Oh. oh, that's just a thing she does. She's harmless. Tell that to the boy she's hanging off of. Poor kid looks like he's seen war. <laughs> Robert lets out a hearty laugh. Hey, I got him to laugh. Huh. Oh man, you know I pegged you for one of those straight lace types. Oh, don't worry. I got pretty wild back in my day. Mm -hmm. Still got a little wild in you. Ooh. Child, I need you to know it. <laughs> yes, oh, thank God. Robert orders a couple more rounds of shots. I gulp. What am I getting myself into? Mm. Think you can go shot for shot? There's only one way to look cool here. I grab the shot closest to me and down it. Robert looks impressed. He takes his shot and knocks it back. Mm -hmm. That's one. So. What do I even talk about? He's so cool. <laughs> he probably hates small talk. Uh, so how are things? Hey. I hate small talk. Okay. Uh. Too many people, and this isn't necessarily you, but too many people think that they have to fill the dead air with noise. Personally, I think they're afraid of the silence. Or they're afraid of what the other person is going to think of the silence. Oh, fuck, Robert. Oh. If you want some unsolicited advice, just learn to be comfortable with silence. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with two people sitting in silence and drinking whiskey. Oh, alright. Oh. Robert and I sit in silence and drink whiskey. I take in the rest of the bar. Patrons laughing, playing darts, spilling beer. Mary giving the hard sell to that young man. The young man pretending he got a phone call from one of his friends. Huh, maybe silence is nice sometimes. So, you ever kill a man? Once. I choke on my drink. Excuse me? Hmm. You know, watch the life draining from someone's eyes. It's not just their life, you know. It's their hopes and dreams draining away. Every memory and experience they've ever had. Gone. 
Uh, no. Uh. Great, me neither. Oh my god! Robert knocks back his shot and motions for me to do the same. I reciprocate. Mm. I'm just messing with you. Relax. Oh, they are a very special breed here. I laugh nervously. Oh. Or am I? Robert. I laugh nervously again. We sip more whiskey and people watch some more. Mary had her sights set on another man after the other one excused himself to the bathroom, and I assume crawled out of the window. Gosh, this whiskey's hitting me hard. Gosh, this whiskey's hitting me hard. You betcha. Robert gets up out of the booth, shouldering his jacket. Oh. Let's roll! Huh. Sorry, whiskey, inside voices. Oh. Let's roll. <laughs> Wait, what about Mary? Huh. Brother, Mary's gonna be just fine. I look over at Mary, who's lying on the bar in front of some poor sap. She's singing happy birthday to him while he insists that it's not his birthday. We make our way out of the bar and back onto the street. I'm trying my hardest not to stumble, but man, that sidewalk is just coming right at me. I hope Robert doesn't notice me tripping over my own feet like this is the first time I've ever been drunk. Where to? Mm-hmm. You'll see. I follow Robert through the street lamp spotlights what? until- Is that a sex shop? Oh. Well, that's- That's a sex shop. Yeah, that's the next right there. That's definitely- But um... a beauty salon and a computer- Oh yeah! <laughs> a sex shop, computer repair. Finally a liquor store. I think we're going to the liquor store. Oh. Wait here. I'll be right back. He brings out a flashlight. Oh. After a minute, Robert returns with two wine bottles and brown paper bags. He hands one to me. Cheers. He sits on the curb and drinks. He motions for me to do the same. This is really not where I expected the night to go. They take a sip. White Zinfidel? What? Nothing. I just wasn't expecting... It is delicious, fruity, and refreshing. Don't judge me. I started to say something, think of his lecture about valuing silence earlier, and stop. I sip on my wine and watch cars drive by. Oh. Let's throw rocks at shit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Robert suddenly <laughs> hurls a rock at a stop sign. The ding echoes throughout the empty parking lot. Mm-hmm. That felt good. He presses a stone in my free hand. Now you try. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> With feeling. I look at the rock in my hand and look at the stop sign. Back at the rock, back at the stop sign. I know what has to be done. Probably the authority one. Probably. I got a problem with authority! <laughs> I hear the rock at the side. It sails over the stop sign right into the window of a parked car, leaving a crack! <gasps> Dude, run! I leap up and dart into the nearest alley, wind in hand. I can hear Robert's footsteps behind me. My son. After I'm sure I'm far enough from the cracked window that I'm no longer culpable for this heinous crime, I stop to catch my breath. Uh-huh. Maybe we strike rock throwing from the to-do list. Agreed. Suddenly, my stomach growls. Oh man, I'm starving. Uh-huh. You didn't eat before drinking. Let's get pizza. I can't argue with that. Or it's good around here. Actually, I don't even care if it's good. It just needs to be edible and in my mouth for the next five minutes. Mm. I know just the place. I follow Robert through a maze of alleys and side streets until we eventually get up in in front of a tiny hole-in-the-wall pizza joint. The bright red neon sign reads, Pete's Pizza, Pete's Up Pizza. Pete's Pizza Pizza. Oh, that was... Ta-da! I can see a few exhausted looking radicers behind the counter tossing dough and pulling piping hot pizzas right out of the stone ovens. My stomach rumbles again. We go up to the counter and get ready to order. Oh. Can I get two slices of Hawaiian pizza? Oh wait, Kayube, you're cool with pineapple on your pizza, right? Yay, Robert, I love you! Anyone who likes pineapple on their pizza is good with me, of course. Oh. Fuck yeah. We wait a minute for a pizza. Oh wait, I'm not Robert. Hello. We wait a minute for a pizza to come out of the oven. I'm practically drooling at the smell. The cashier hands us each a giant slice on a paper plate so saturated with grease that I'm worried it will fall apart. We take our pizzas outside and wander through the alleyways as we eat. I take a bite. It's absolutely delicious. This is really making me want pizza, though. It is Game of Thrones night. Oh, it is. 
We could order a pizza. Oh, we could. Should we order a pizza after this? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we should. Yeah. We're getting pizza, guys. We're getting pizza. Thanks, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Pineapple is truly the best pizza topping. Yes. Mm. You said it. Man, I feel way better now. Yeah, because you're mm -hmm. on the empty stomach. You and me both. I hear noise coming out of a slightly ajar door in the alleyway. Robert looks at me excitedly. Mm -hmm. Got any more of that wild in ya? You betcha. Good on ya. Robert and I slide the door open and peek inside. It's completely dark except for some flickering light. We slowly creep forward, cautious not to be heard or seen. Shh. Don't shush me so loud. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> we come to the end of the hallway and find ourselves standing in front of a movie screen. Oh, this suddenly makes sense. Did we really just sneak into a movie theater like a couple of teenagers? No talking during the movie. We look into the audience and are surprised to find it almost completely empty, save for a row of a few teenagers in the front. They look annoyed when they notice us. Robert starts making his way to the very back of the theater and I follow him. We settle in with our wines and try to make sense of this movie. It's a romantic comedy, I think. A young man is frantically trying to get through New York to find the woman he's finally realized he's in love with. Kiss already! There's nobody to kiss yet. You want to kiss the taxi driver? Hell yeah. <laughs> the kids down the way notice us heckling. One of them speaks up. Oh no. This is you, dude. Oh, I don't remember his voice. I don't either. Let's hey go. man, keep it down. Oh damn, that's Ernest Hemingway. Hugo's kid. Ernest! Hey Ernest, I know you. It's me, your neighbor! Hi! <laughs> Ernest turns back around, embarrassed. I turn back to Robert. He kiss anyone yet? It turns out that yes, he did kiss someone. He had made his way out to a tiny island near New York to profess his love for a woman who for some reason he knew would be there. She tells him that they hit the jackpot. He said that they had, but I think there was some subtext in here. Boo! Love is dead! Shut up! It's beautiful! <laughs> oh, kinda like a nice now. <laughs> no, you shut up! Ernest grumbles. The credits start to roll. I stand up. Robert immediately pulls me back down. Hundreds of people work very hard to make this film happen, and you're gonna sit here and appreciate them. Okay. Look at that. Elizabeth Shelton. She worked really hard. I bet she did lots of good, uh, wardrobe design. Thank you, Elizabeth Shelton, for this beautiful film-going experience. And Peter Anders, catering, fed a bunch of people so that they could have the energy to do their jobs. What a guy. I'll let the credits roll while Robert individually thanks wow, every member of the cute. crew. Once it's finally over, he makes sure no animals were harmed in the making of this film. We leave the movie theater. Oh no. <laughs> I like him a lot. For the person who was at the bottom of my list of dads, he is now he's, like, he's, near the top. He's crawling up there, dude. <laughs> we stumble into the theater parking lot, polishing off the rest of our wine. Hey, assholes! I don't know where a rock flies through the air and hits me on the Whoa. knee. My knee! What the hell? Oh, Ernest and his friends stand in the alleyway, blocking. Are you gonna exit. fight us? What do you guys want? Why'd you go and throw a rock at my knee? This is my good knee. My orthopedist is gonna be pissed. Ernest tosses another rock up and down his hands. What's wrong with this kid? You ruined the theater-going experience. Now you have to pay. Well, I don't have any cash on me right now, and, like, movies got really expensive. Ernest hucks another rock at my other knee. I'm able to jump out of the way, but I didn't probably stretch before physical activity. I'm probably going to be still super sore in the morning. Ugh. You ruined it for you? That movie was pretty crappy in the first place. Hey, you take that back. It was a beautiful love story with really genuine acting. Mm. You call that good acting? What class of this mainstream slob have you been served your entire life? What? Whoa, whoa. Have you ever seen any Michael Powell? A Matter of Life and Death? 1946? Easily the toughest five minutes of love you'll ever witness. Listen, man. 
How dare no. you? <laughs> you said that popcorn ass drivel, the mass media shoving down your throat will only make you dumber and sadder. You of all people should strive for a higher standard in the art you consume. Your name is Ernest Hemingway, for Christ's sakes! Mm. Oh no, now you've done it! Ernest rushes Robert, screaming like a <laughs> banshee. I died in between Ernest and Robert, trying to stop the kid. He lunges forward, kicking me as hard as he can in the knee. Fuck my knee! Excuse me? Robert gets in between Ernest and myself. It's as if he's seeing red. Fuck my fucking knee hurts! <sighs> hurts my knee. Alright, buddy. Talk like a punk, get hit like a punk. Oh my god! Robert squares up into a boxer's stance. Queensberry rules. Three minute rounds, one minute rounds in between. No low blows, fish hooks, or grabs, or high blows. What? Hmm? Don't even think about pulling an illegal turnstile. That's an automatic deduction of three points. I. <sighs> You'll have to designate a second if you're unable to fulfill your role as main duelist. One of your friends over there looks like he has enough youthful ability <laughs> to handle it. Hey man, I don't want to get dragged into this. That movie sucked. It's too late. You two are bloodbound. If he dies, you die. <laughs> oh my god, Robert is a fucking nerd. How dare you. Sorry, that'll make the rules. Dr. Queensberry. We're just gonna go. Ernest and his friends rarely back away. Robert calls after them. <clears throat> the Queensberry Association will hear about this. <clears throat> Consume better content! Once the teens are safely out of earshot, Robert turns to me. Are you able to actually fight that kid? Oh, were you about to actually fight that kid? Are you kidding me? I would never hit a child. That would be despicable. Hey. You throw the rules at them? Tough. They always bolt. Nobody wants a Queensberry sanction thrown out. Huh. But full disclosure, I made half of that up. <laughs> wow. Hey. See, you don't ever have to know the rules. You just make them up. Come on, let's get out of here. Oh no, Robert. Robert and I cool down a bit as we walk back to the neighborhood. I'm so sorry, I get really into the art of filmmaking when I drink. It's okay, I think it's cool how much you like movies. To be honest, I don't know a lot about them myself. Buddy, I got so much to show you. You ever see any Sam Fuller? I haven't. Oh boy. Fuller is cash. Thanks for the adventure. <laughs> adventure is all I got, buddy. Aw. Robert throws an arm around my shoulder and we drunkenly belt out tunes all the way back. We finally get to his doorstep. Yeah. That was an interesting night. I liked it. Aw, a smile forms on his cheeks. A rare sight. <sighs> Let's sing again soon, yeah? Yeah. I linger there for a second, swaying drunkenly in the night breeze. Robert claps me on the shoulder. <sighs> night, bud. Robert heads back inside, and I stumble my way back home. Oh, jeez, I'm so glad it's over. <laughs> Is your throat okay? <laughs> no water, oh my god, it's gonna be shot tonight. I can already feel it. It is so, like, raw. If it bleeds, we can kill it. We got an ass! Yeah! Nice. Oh, we did so good. Did he say something? What did he say? He said, if it bleeds, we can kill it, I think. It was pretty weird. It's pretty weird. It's a little odd. He's a little weird, but I like him. But I love him, right? I really like him. <laughs> like, a lot. I'm actually kind of excited for date number two. But we are going to rest there uh, because my bae's voice is a little, a little hurting right now. <laughs>